Hello and welcome back to Journey4 TV. My name is David Kempster and this is the third of the web chats I'm having with one of our consultancy team. Um, it's a chance to get to know them and an opportunity for you to get an insight on what makes them tick and what they're doing for our clients. So today it's my pleasure to introduce Stuart Webster to you. Stuart and I go back a long, long way, I can assure you, and we've shared many a good time and uh, plenty of success together in our careers. Um, but he's really to tell a little bit more about things from his perspective. So Stuart, hello there. How are things? Yeah, good. Thank you, David. Nice to see you. Great. Um, also, very good to see you. Um, firstly, could you explain a little bit about uh, you and your background? Yeah, sure. Um, so I've had varied roles over my 30 plus years uh, in business in general management roles, a little bit of merger and acquisition uh, work in that period of time as well. But at the core of me is sales, really. So everything really reverts back to sales roles where I have held senior positions within uh, financial services, uh, legal services, and latterly within the motorsport industry as well. And how or why did you become involved with Journey 4 from that? What seems quite a different background, really? Uh, I've known Stuart Pierce, one of the directors of Journey 4, for 20 years or so now. We've worked together in different businesses three or four times. Uh, when he joined Journey 4, it was always an aim for both of us to actually continue our working life together. I had the opportunity uh, two or three years ago to talk with Jonathan and Stuart about what they were doing. I became involved actively about 18 months ago and started to do some assignments at the back end of 2019. And where would you say your specialisms of, uh, where do they lie and what have you been getting up to in that time? Um, well, as I said a little bit earlier, anything sales really related for me. So that can mean working with clients regarding their structure, their sales structure, mm. how they structure the team, how they point the team at what they need to do on a daily basis to make themselves effective, how they pay them and commission schemes. So anything like that is in my specialism. And also the uh, management of the larger clients is also a specialism of my own where uh, you bring in certain key account management techniques to help you get the best out of your client and proactively manage them moving forward. So that sort of stuff has been at the core of what I've been doing with uh, Journey4. So with those kind of key account management practices in mind, what specific value do you try and demonstrate with, with your clients? What, what are you looking to try and achieve when you're developing those relationships commercially? Uh, well, always with, with the client, you've got to get them to see that you're adding value to what they're trying to achieve with their with their client base. And the bottom line is you need to get them to see that what you're um, putting in place with them or helping them put in place will drive additional revenue. Uh, that's, that's where it comes from. You, you need to bring in a positive contribution yourself. So the most recent project that I've done with Journey 4 involved key account management uh, methodology being introduced into a utilities client. Um, and the, the ethos that we were using there was to get uh, the client to identify the key influencers within that client and then actually put together a program of specific actions with those key influencers mm -hmm. to solidify the relationship that they have with the client and then as I said drive additional revenue as a result mm -hmm. of doing that. And what do you think that's achieved for the client? What have they got out of that? The, the first thing that they've achieved is that they've retained all of their clients that we I work with them with. Uh, they have strengthened the relationships they've got with those clients. The whole program gave them a different way of looking at who their key influencers were because it's not always the one with the fancy job title who's the greatest influencer for that particular client and it made them think of that in a very different way and therefore prioritize their actions with the people who were going to give the biggest bang for the buck within that client as I said that could be someone who was relatively junior on the food chain in that particular client if you keep that person happy and they can see the benefit of your relationship and how you work with them it then percolates its way up to the top of the business and makes your job a lot easier absolutely 2020 was a really weird year for everybody wasn't it um and this year has carried on in much the same vein so far yes. what would you say has been the biggest lesson for you both personally and professionally through this period for me, it's been to stay active and, and also stay positive. 
Mm. Uh, I think it's been very easy for everybody to get a bit dragged down by all the stuff we see around us. Uh, We're actually, you know, we're attacked on a daily basis, aren't we, with every stat in the world and you know me quite well i like a stat actually you do. so i've been <laughs> i've been reading reading many too many stats over the last few years but you've actually got to see beyond the stats um and do things which uh, give yourself positive push forward so for me that's been a, a conscious effort on my part i've become much more active in terms of things like this on Zoom and Teams than I've ever been in my life. I was working a little with both of them actually prior to the pandemic started, but I'm certainly more familiar now than I ever was before. That's from a professional perspective, but also from a, a personal perspective where we've had we've had quizzes as a family over the last few months, particularly over the festive period where uh, we've got together as a family, as we're quite diverse ge- geographically, mm-hmm. it's been the e- the only way, not the easiest way, the only way we've been able to mm-hmm. see one another. So that's been really important to us. And I think seeing familiar faces at this time helps everybody, doesn't it, really? And for everyone's benefit, what would you say is your specialist subject on a quiz? <laughs> Sport, I would say, would be my specialist subject. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a... Uh, I'm a bit of a geek as far as most things motorsport are concerned. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll also, uh, for my, uh, for, I'm, I'm actually allowed to come out the closet again. I'm an actual, actually, an Aston Villa fan. And as we're doing all right at the moment, I can actively talk about that again. Yeah, absolutely. I remember having the same conversation with Karen on this webcast last time that she's uh, she's feeling confident and free now to admit that she's a Villa supporter. So uh, well done, you're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, Stuart, what's the one thing you think that people would find uh, surprising or unexpected about you? All the people that would know me quite well, and you'll be one of them. One of the things that uh, may surprise a few people right now is, I, I, as I said, it's important for me that I keep myself active. So I'm relatively time rich uh, right now. So uh, I had the opportunity over the Christmas uh, New Year period to start to do some volunteer work. So uh, I chose to do some volunteer work uh, at the lo- local COVID max mass vaccination centre in Bournemouth by the Pier, which at its peak can do 1500 injections a day. Um, so uh, it's quite a big operation. So uh, I have now used my uh, um, my outgoing nature to welcome people into the car park and make them feel comfortable when they arrive. I've now got uh, a, uh, a qualification in cleaning down a chair after somebody sat in it, um, which probably wasn't uh, a, a core competence of mine not so long ago. Uh, and probably more importantly, I'm actually feeling like I'm doing something positive to help us get through this dreadful situation we find ourselves in. Well, I'm sure everyone would um, you know, join with me and congratulate you in what you're doing and uh, and how that does provide wider sets of skills and engagement with people and empathy and so on. It's 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 volunteering is is a very powerful you know force for good in that sense, isn't it? So uh, well done. Um, yeah. Well, Stuart, thank you very much for your time with us uh, today. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. And um, hopefully everyone's had a bit more insight about uh, my old business mate. Um, And if you want to get in touch with uh, Stuart or any of the other consultants in this series, then go to www.journey4.co.uk and tap 